With Photo Vibrance, you can transform any photo into a mesmerizing moving image in just a few clicks. Simply drop your image into Vibrance and choose your preferred resolution. Inside the editor is where the magic happens. Click around the parts of your image you want to remain still. Then choose the motion arrows to add movement to the areas in your image that you want to bring to life. It's really that simple. You can also add text, images, as well as special effects and sky replacements to make your images really grab attention. Once you're ready, choose your file format and hit publish. That's it. Get started transforming your images into motion pictures in minutes with Photo Vibrance. Welcome to Photo Vibrance. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started creating animated images inside of Vibrance. So you have two options. You can either drag and drop an image over here or click to browse from your desktop, or you can go through the stock image integrations and search for an image using Pixels or Pixabay. I'm going to go and grab an image from my desktop and just drop it in like so. So now over here, what we can do is change the resolution and you can set custom dimensions over here. If you select custom, you can go back to the original image size or you can set you know, sizes that are good for social media like the square one over here. So I'm just gonna select that and click on next. Okay, great, so inside the editor we've got options such as adding text, you can add your logo or an image, you can add effects, shapes, you can adjust the size again and you can publish your uh, project as well as save your project to work on it at a later stage. So what I'm gonna do first of all is begin animating. So what you can do is just zoom into the image over here and you want to go through and set some anchors where you don't want the image to move. So I'm going to go and grab single and just simply start clicking around here. And I just want to, you know, set the water in motion. So I want to kind of you know, freeze everything around the water. You can also use the path option if you want to just simply click and then click and, it'll, and hit enter. And then it will basically add the paths at the end like that. So I'll just go in and I just hit the selection tool actually and go and just move these around a little bit. So now I've got my anchors in place. What I want to do is add some arrows to make the, the image move. So I'm going to select single and just simply click and drag. And what you want to do is not make the arrows too big. Uh, you kind of want to make them this kind of size depending on how much motion you want to add the bigger the arrows more motion you'll add to your picture so you just want to kind of draw it out like that um, we can keep going add some more arrows and then click on the play button you can see we've got this nice kind of image like this and what you want to do is just you know kind of go in there and maybe add a few more arrows There we go. We can also adjust the speed of the animation by just simply dragging this out like this. And what I also want to do with this one is I want to add some fog. So I'm going to go over to the effects over here and I'm just going to scroll down and add some fog. So I'm going to go grab this one here, kind of zoom out and then just kind of place it near the bottom like that. And I'm going to set the speed to slow for this fog, okay? So let's just play this through. And it's looking really nice. So once you're ready and you're happy with your image, what you can do is go to the publish button over here. You can select whether you want it to be an MP4 or a GIF image. I'm going to go with MP4 and let's just set it to two loops. 
and click on publish and give it a name. So let's call this one beautiful. And you'll be able to see that image will start exporting and once it's ready we can go view our animated image. So let's just go ahead and preview the video. So let's check this out. And that's how easy it is to go through and create animated images inside of Photo Vibrance. In this video, I want to show you how to animate this image to make the dust really kind of fly around with Photo Vibrance. So I'm just going to go to the path for the anchors. I'm just going to draw out around this picture to the places that I want to stay still. So I'm just going to go through and quickly draw around this bike. Okay, cool. So once you've drawn out your path, hit enter on your keyboard and you'll be able to see it locks in all those anchors. And you can go and manually add anchors by clicking on single and just simply pointing and clicking around where you want to add your anchors. Once we've isolated the areas, what we can do now is add in our arrows. And for kind of dust, the best one probably would be to go with, with the single arrows. Uh, if you're drawing out water and things like that, you can use a path and that looks really good. So I'm just going to go and draw out some arrows over here. And let's just bring them up. And depending on how much motion you want to add, you can draw out your arrows bigger or smaller. Usually it's best to go with not too, too big ones. Um, but what you want to do is, you know, just draw them out and see what it looks like. A lot of this kind of animating is kind of trial, trial and error. So you kind of have to play around with it, see what looks good to you and make adjustments. So I'm just going to draw out a few more like this. Maybe one up here as well and one there and let's just preview what that looks like cool so that's looking really really good i can go through and adjust the speed like that that's looking really nice um and maybe move this one make it a little bit smaller play around with that and yeah let's preview this again so that's looking really really cool so that's how you can create a really nice looking dust effect using the motion arrows inside of Photo Vibrance and once you're done simply go to publish you can then choose whether you want it to be mp4 or a gif image and how many loops you want by default uh, all the animations in here uh, go through in loops um, so if you're playing it really fast it's going to loop quite quickly and then start again like that um, so you want to kind of play around how, how much you want it to loop um, and yeah you can just go with one loop if you're going to be posting on social media because it will automatically loop anyway um, or you can, if you want to make a, a longer video, you can just, you know, add two loops, for example, and publish that. Okay, great. So now I've published this video, you have to see, I'll just resize it down. You have to see what it looks like. So it's looking really, really cool. And what you could also do as well, if you want to have it in different formats, after you've published it, what you can do is adjust the size. Let's say I want to make it a square one like that for Instagram, for example. I could just go through and bring this over, done editing, and then I can go through and republish that as another video. So I hope you enjoyed this example of how you can create some really cool looking effects with your images inside of Photo Vibrance. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to animate this lion and basically make the hair move inside of Photo Vibrance. So what you wanna do with an animal like a lion is you wanna kinda of mark out first the face. So I'm gonna go to the path for the anchors and just simply draw around the face to add like a structure to this image. So I'm just gonna quickly go through and add it around here. Like so, and then hit enter. And I also wanna go and add, uh, you know, some anchors around the eye so that this also stays in place while the image is moving. So I'm just gonna add around the eyes and also around the nose. Like so. And that's looking good and also probably around the ears I'm just gonna add some anchors around here so now what I can do is go to the arrows and I'm gonna use the path uh, one over here for the arrows and just simply draw out a path of where I want this here to animate so I'm gonna go with the actual kind of flow of the hair so just gonna bring it out like this with the main bring this down also I'll bring some arrows over here and also around the face, I'm gonna add some arrows. And yeah, this looking quite good. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly preview that and show you what that looks like. 
cool. So as you can see, it's looking really, really nice right now. Um, and it just really helps you to, um, you know, get more attention to your images. So that's looking really good. I'm also going to add some over on the ears up here. Add some more motion maybe around here as well. And maybe a little bit up here. Cool. So that's looking really, really good. And yeah, what I could do now is just simply go through, click on publish and choose whether I want it to be an MP4 or a GIF and publish this onto my desktop. So I hope you enjoyed this example of how you can animate hair on animals and really bring your images to life inside of Photovibrance. In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate an iris inside of Photovibrance. So what you want to do is, first of all, just draw out uh, the anchor point, so where you want the image to stay still. So I'm just going to draw around this iris here. And also I'm going to draw around the pupil and the inside of the eye, like so. Cool. So what we could do is either draw a path and make it like rotate around, or we could draw uh, some, some arrows kind of going outside like this and making it kind of expand and move around like this. So I'm going to try this one like this, for example. Just add the arrows to draw the motion. Cool, so I'm going to play this through, see what it looks like. Cool, and as you can see, it really is eye-catching, <laughs> literally, uh, with this eye. Um, and what you could also do, as I said, if you, for example, let's go and select just the arrows. I'm just going to select this and remove those arrows. We could go with the path and just draw around this kind of loop, I guess, of motion and just preview that as well. And that looks super cool, as you can see. So you can really have fun, you know, being creative with certain images like these eyes. And yeah, that's how you can animate an iris inside of Photo Vibrance. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the sky on any image inside of Photo Vibrance. So what I'm going to do is simply go to Effects and then go to Skies. And you can simply hover your mouse on the different types of skies and then left click to add it to your canvas. And then I'm just going to simply resize it a little bit like this and maybe place it up a bit like so. The next thing you want to do is click on Draw Mask. And you can simply just zoom in a bit and draw out the edge of your mask over here and then fill it in once you've added the edge. So I'm going to quickly go through and do this. Okay, great. So once you've drawn out the mask, simply hit finish. And then what you can do is adjust the edge fading by simply play, playing around with this. And you see that it helps you to uh, basically merge the footage together so it looks a lot cleaner. And you can also adjust the speed of your video. So let's click on play. And you can see how nice that looks to really create a lot of attention to your image. And you can also adjust the speed as well, the overall speed of the video by dragging this down like so and placing it like that. So that's how to quickly create a sky replacement inside of Photo Vibrance. Hi, in this video, I wanna run through what are keyframes and how you can use them to create animations inside of Photo Vibrance. A keyframe inside of Photo Vibrance basically tells us where we want to position the camera. So right now, by default, we have a keyframe at zero seconds. And this right now shows us the position of where we are with this camera, okay? So uh, if I move it there, this is the position. At, at zero seconds where the camera is going to be. Now I want to move the camera and I want it to basically you know move it down like so so I can reveal this text here. So what I'm going to do is click on add keyframe and I'm going to place it about four seconds. So it's going to start at zero seconds and it's going to start at this position. Then at four seconds I'm going to click on this one to select it and I'm going to move the camera so that it moves from this position to this position like so after four seconds. So I might just zoom in as well a little bit. And it's basically setting the position and also the the scale or the zoom of this camera, okay? So at four seconds now, this is the position and the scale of this keyframe. Now if I go back to zero, you'll see this is where we started and now we've got at four seconds it's like so. So if I play this through, you've got this animation. 
Now, if we want to create another keyframe to go from this position to another position, what we do is click on add keyframe and let's say about seven seconds. So we're going to go from four seconds. So three seconds in between, it's going to move to another position. So what we can do is maybe move this back down like so to hide that text again. Maybe we can zoom out slightly, maybe rotate it slightly, even if we want. And let's position it like so. So now this is the, uh, yeah, in position of this other keyframe, okay? So let's just preview that. Now, if we wanna create an animation where it goes from here to here, and then, it, and then it stays here for one second and then moves to here, what we can do is simply select this keyframe, this position, and then double click, and it's gonna create another keyframe at the same with the same values of this keyframe so it's going to stay still here and then it's going to move over like so so let's preview that and as you can see now it's moving back like so so that's just a quick overview of keyframes um, the best thing to do is go through and have to try and have a play around with it but basically we're, we're setting positions where we want the camera to move to after a certain amount of time. So the time is down over here and the current timeline is 10 seconds long. You can adjust the duration of the timeline as well by dragging this out like so. And yeah, that's a quick overview of using keyframes inside of Photo Vibrance. Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started creating the parallax 3D effect on your images. So I'm gonna go grab this image of an owl. And once you drop it in here, you have to select either the magic motion or the parallax effect. So I'm gonna go with the parallax effect over here. And in the next step, we can go through and adjust, you know, the size of, you know, the image, the resolution that you want. I'm going to go with uh, original just to make it so I can see the entire picture and then go to the next step over here. Now, on the first step for the parallax effect, what we need to do is cut out our main object or objects. And then in the next step, we need to go through and actually fill in the gap where, where we've cut it out. And then we can go through into the editor and start animating the uh, parallax effect. So what I'm going to do is click on the select object tool and then just simply go through and start uh, drawing out around this main object. So what I'm going to do is just kind of cut out this branch as well as the owl and I'll just quickly go through and do this. So you basically just have to left click around it like so. You can use a scroll on your mouse to you know zoom in and zoom out and you want to try and go as close to the border as you can or the outline of your objects. Okay so you can kind of play around with like this um, and once you've gone through and added all your dots you can then make adjustments to it, add new dots as well so I'm just gonna go through quickly and just add these dots in okay cool so once you've just connected the dots like so you can go through and have a look at your outline and you can you know go ahead and adjust the dots like this you can also add new dots by holding down control and left clicking to add another dot uh, maybe I'll just quickly make some adjustments over here. It doesn't have to be perfect because we can add a blur kind of outline on in the editor to make it more smoother. Um, but let's just make it like so. Okay, cool. So that's looking pretty good. And what I want to do now is um, give this a name. So let's call this one L, like that. And if you want to select multiple objects, you can also go through and click select object again and, and draw it out again, and you have multiple selections. So I've done this, I'm going to do the next step over here. And in this step, what we can do is basically we need to fill in the gaps of the object that we just cut out. Because when we go over to the next step over here into the editor, um, once we start playing around with the camera, you have to see if I just, maybe I'll drag this over a little bit. If I start playing around the camera, you can see that we've got this black background cut out and it doesn't look very good so we need to go back over here to the next step and use the clone tool so if I go to start cloning I'm going to bring up the radius quite big so you can see I've got a really big selection over here um, and what I'm going to do is simply uh, go close to the edge of that cut out hold down control to take a sample of this um, part of the image and, and left click on it and then I just need to move my mouse over slightly and you have to see that it basically uh, copies that image uh, like so and I can start filling in this gap and you can also make other selections so let's say you want to select over here just move over slightly and just add in your uh, you know your kind of crop like this 
Um, so let's just go and I'll just quickly grab this and move this all the way down over here. And yeah, you want to you know try your best to make make it look as good as you can. The best thing to do is just to um, follow along with me with this image because it's quite a good one to start off with. And as you get better and, and you figure out how it all works, you can um, you know play around with more complex images. Um, but yeah, you just go through. You can zoom in as well, and you can adjust the radius to make it a bit smaller. Um, and then just left click to select, and then yeah, play around with that like so. So what I'm going to do is um, you know just go through and keep filling this in. I'll make this a bit bigger, and um, and then we can go through and help hop in over to the editor and start animating this. Okay, cool. So that's looking pretty good. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but yeah, you can go through and play around with that. And then we go to the next step over here. Now, as you can see, if I just move this camera over here, you'll be able to see we've got this really nice looking 3D effect. And if I zoom in, you can see we've got a branch and our owl, and it's a lot f uh, further away from the actual background. And the closer I move my objects to the left, so over here, you'll be able to see that we've got more of a 3D effect like that, okay? And the reason is that uh, over here is the beginning of the camera, or the kind of the closest part of the camera, and here's the end of the camera. So if I go back up to layers, it's easier to move over here. If I bring this completely to the right, and then go back to camera, you'll be able to see that it's basically moving as one object with the background. But if I go back up to layers, and then move this over yeah, about here, and go to camera, it's a lot more 3D, okay? So what we want to do is go back to layers and over here you can add things like text. So let's just add, uh, let's say zoo and I might adjust the letter spacing and I'll make this text want BBAS and position it like so. And let's say open. And I'll adjust the letter spacing as well and I'll go with something like work sense. Okay, something like that looks all right. And one other thing as well I want to add is a butterfly. So I'm going to go to, over to Effects over here and select this butterfly here. And I'll just resize this one down and position it over on the branch like that. And I'm going to go with the speed of this animation to make it slow, okay? So now I've got a butterfly and what we're going to do is we want this butterfly to rest on the branch. So to do that, we want to make sure that it's in the same position as the um, object of the owl or the branch like that so that's on the same basic uh, axis as this object so when it zooms in it's not going to fly away it's just going to stay there okay so what we want to do now is begin adding things like particles and camera animation so the first thing I'm going to do is go to particles I'm going to turn this on and you can select different particles over here you can also upload your own custom PNG icons or images and you can create your own have your own particles um, this one looks really good, and I might adjust the blur slightly. Um, I think it looks alright actually. Maybe I'll bring down, maybe the size slightly like this. Maybe bring it, let's have a look. Something like 30. Might be alright. Okay, cool. So now we can create the animations. So I'm going to start over here at this position. I might rotate it slightly like this, and bring it maybe across a little bit like that. So this is going to be the start position, and then I'm going to double click on the timeline at 5 seconds to create a new keyframe. And these keyframes you can obviously position where you want. It's basically creating an animation from this point to this point. And at this point, I've got this one selected. What I can do is use the plus uh, icons over here to zoom it in. And also you know, drag it out to the left slightly maybe. And maybe also rotate it. Uh, let's go back like this maybe. Okay, that's good. I might also adjust the text so it's on the same position as the other text, like that. Okay, something like this looks quite cool. So it's going to go from here, and it's going to zoom into here. And yeah, let's just preview that actually. Okay, that's looking really good. Maybe I'd have the text slightly in line, I guess, with the other objects, so something like this. Um, and I could actually rotate it so that the text 
is in line with the camera. So something like that looks good. You play around like that. And you can also, if you select the camera and go to settings, you can adjust the rotation and the scale over here as well. If you want to rotate it like this, things like that. Bring it down to zero actually like that. And yeah, this looks, that looks pretty good. So let's just preview that. Cool. I think it actually looks better if you actually rotate it in. So I might just rotate this slightly. Let's say we start from, maybe we can start from about, oh, this minus six. And I'll zoom in a little bit as well. So let's say from that kind of position. And then it zooms in like this. Okay, cool. Let's just preview that. Okay, that's looking really, really good. So one other thing we can also do is you can adjust the duration of your timeline. So if you want it to be longer than 10 seconds when you export it, you can obviously adjust this however long you want. Um, I'm going to go with 10 seconds. And what I want to do is I want this to start at this position and also end at this position. So with this keyframe select, I'm just going to double click to create another keyframe and it's going to be the same position as this one and just drag this right down to the end. And it's going to go from here and it's going to go back to here so that when I play this on my website or on Facebook, it's going to continually loop without any um, jitters, okay? And one thing as well, you can also adjust the easing of your animations. So from, from here to here to this keyframe, it's going to have this kind of uh, easing. You can create like some really bouncy ones, elastic ones as well. I'm going to go with, um, let's go with power three for this one. And for this one from here to here, I'm going to go with sign. It looks quite nice. So let's just preview that. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's how you can go through and create a really nice looking parallax effect. Uh, make sure to check out the other tutorials as well with more advanced uh, techniques and things like that. Um, once you've finished creating your video, you can go to uh, save and save the project or you can publish it by clicking on publish and just add your own, um, save, choose where you wanna save it to and just publish it. Uh, but yeah, that's the main things uh, in creating this parallax effect. Have a go yourself. Make sure to download this photo and try it out as well. Um, to get started and yeah have fun creating.